This is what you said about 9-11, and I want to ask you about it on the other side. The, the World, World Trade, Trade Center came down because yeah. Bill Clinton didn't kill Osama bin Laden when he had the chance to kill him. That's a, that's a big charge. Uh, I know Bill Clinton has said it is one of his regrets, but he did make an attempt to go after him. But you believe that is a direct result if Osama, that basically Bill Clinton's failure led to 9-11? Well, I believe that if Osama bin Laden had been killed, Al-Qaeda as an organization would not have grown to the point where it have conducted 9-11. The responsibility of 9-11 falls on the fact that Al-Qaeda was allowed to grow and prosper and the decision was not made to take out their leader when the chance existed to do so. Not once, but four times according to the 9-11 report. President Clinton has acknowledged that as a regret. And so the bottom line is that Al-Qaeda was able to carry out 9-11 because as an organization they grew and prospered in capability led by Osama bin Laden. Had bin Laden been taken out, it is, pro it is doubtful that 9-11 would have happened at least on September 11 of 2001 because Al-Qaeda would not have been in a position to be able to carry something so like that So you're not blaming 9-11 on Bill Clinton? No, he made a decision not to take out its leader, which I think ended up being there, the situation that, that happened with 9-11. And this was a response to an attack that the reason why 9-11 happened was because of George W. Bush. And my argument is, if you're going to ascribe blame, don't blame George W. Bush. Blame a decision that was made years earlier not to take out bin Laden when, it was, when, the, when the opportunity presented itself. So I'm actually still not quite clear. Are, are you putting this on, are you putting 9-11 on Bill Clinton? No, I'm putting it on his decision not to take out bin Laden, absolutely. This is what happens when you have a chance to take out the leader of a terrorist organization and you fail to do so, and the results are something like 9-11. Jeb Bush and you have been friends for many years, and Jeb recently got into a rather short mm -hmm. spitting contest with Donald Trump over comments that Mr. Trump made about President Bush, 9-11, and President Bush being responsible and not doing enough after 9-11. Jeb Bush and you have been friends for many years. I just want to say, at least on behalf of me and my family, I thank God all the time that it was George W. Bush in the White House on 9-11 and not Al Gore. And you can, I think you can look back in hindsight and say a couple things, but he kept us safe. And not only did he keep us safe, but no matter what you want to say about weapons of mass destruction, as it relates to my brother, there's one thing I know for sure. He kept us safe. He kept us safe. Look, my brother uh, responded to a crisis, and he did it uh, as you would hope a president would do. He united the country, he organized our country, and he kept us safe. That, that PDB said nothing about an attack on America. As you might recall, there were some specific threats for overseas that we reacted to, and as the president, I wanted to know whether there was anything, any actionable intelligence. And I looked at the August 6th briefing. I was satisfied that some of the, uh, some of the uh, matters were being looked into. Uh, and, uh, but that, that PDB said nothing about an attack on America. It talked about intentions, about somebody who hated America. Well, we knew that. May he protect them. Had I known there was going to be an attack on America, I would have moved mountains to stop the attack. I don't know everything I can. My job is to protect the American people. And I asked the intelligence agency to analyze the data to tell me whether or not we faced a threat internally like they thought we had faced a threat in other parts of the world. That's what the PDB request was. And had there been actionable intelligence, we'd have moved on it. I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to in the PDB, but if you're referring to the fact that the FBI was investigating things, that's great. That's what we expect the FBI to do. Had I known that the enemy was going to use airplanes to kill on that fateful morning, I would have done everything in my power to protect the American people. I'd like to ask you about the uh, August 6th uh, PDB. Sure. I'd like to ask you about the uh, August 6th uh, PDB. Sure. You mentioned it uh, in, f at Fort Hood on Sunday. You said, you pointed out that it did not ta warn of a hijacking of airplanes to crash into buildings, but right. that it warned of hijacking to uh, obviously take hostages and uh, to, to secure the release of extremists uh, being held by the U.S. 
did that trigger some specific actions on your part in the administration since it dealt with potentially hundreds of lives and, and, and a, a blackmail attempt on the United States government? Yeah. Um, it was also an indication, as you mentioned, that, um, that bin Laden might want to hijack an airplane, but as you said, not to fly into a building, but perhaps to um, uh, release a, a person in jail. In other words, you serve it as a blackmail. And um, of course that concerns me. All those reports concern me. I believe the title was Bin Laden Determined to Attack Inside the United States. Uh, uh, now, the, uh, the PDB... You. Two weeks later, the White House finally declassified the PDB. There's lots of examples where it's a domestic threat. Bin Laden told followers he wanted to retaliate in Washington. You know, Bin Laden was planning to exploit the operatives' access to, U to the U.S. to mount a terrorist strike. Abu Zubaydah was planning his own U.S. attack. Less FBI information since that time indicates patterns of suspicious activity in this country consistent with preparations for hijackings or other types of attacks, including recent surveillance of federal buildings in New York. That's present tense and domestic. I know you said there'll be a time for politics, but you've also said you wanted to change the tone of Washington. Howard Dean recently seemed to muse aloud whether you had advanced knowledge of 9-11. Do you agree or disagree with the RNC that this kind of rhetoric borders on political hate speech? Yeah. Uh, look, there's time for politics. And, uh, you know, it's time for politics. And uh, I... Uh, it's an absurd insinuation. As it relates to my brother, there's one thing I know for sure. He kept us safe. I um, want to check in very quickly with the President of the United States, John Cochran, who was with the President in Florida. John? Peter, as you know, the President's down in Florida talking about education. He got up out of his uh, hotel suite this morning, was about to leave. Reporters saw the White House Chief of Staff, Andy Card, whisper into his ear. Then reporters said to the President, do you know what's going on in New York? He said he did, and said he will have something to say about it later. His first event is about a half an hour at a, an elementary school in Sarasota, Florida. He got up out of his uh, hotel suite this morning, was about to leave. He got up out of his uh, hotel suite this morning, was about to leave. He got up out of his uh, hotel suite this morning, was about to leave. Reporters saw the White House Chief of Staff, Andy Card, whisper into his ear. Then reporters said to the President, do you know what's going on in New York? He said he did, and said he will have something to say about it later. His first event is about a half an hour at an elementary school in Sarasota, Florida. I had, was sitting outside uh, the, the, the classroom waiting to go in, and I saw an airplane hit the tower of, an, of a TV. You know, the TV was obviously on, and I, I used to fly myself, and I said, well, there's one terrible pilot. And uh, it said it must have been a, a horrible accident. I uh, was sitting there and my chief of staff, well, first of all, when we walked in the classroom, uh, I had seen this uh, plane fly into the first building. There was a TV set on and, and uh, you know, I thought it was pilot error. And uh, I was amazed anybody could make such a terrible mistake. And you know, something was wrong with the plane or, you know, uh, I had seen this uh, plane fly into the first building. There was a TV set on, and, and uh, you know, I thought it was pilot error. Uh, I had seen this uh, plane fly into the first building. There was a TV set on, and, and uh, you know, I thought it was pilot error. And uh, I was amazed anybody could make such a terrible mistake. And you know, something was wrong with the plane, or you know. Uh, I had been notified that a plane had hit the World Trade Center. At first I thought it was a um, light aircraft. And my reaction was, man, it, it, either the weather was bad or something extraordinary happened to the pilot. We have something that has happened here at the World Trade Center. My heavens, this has just, just happened within several minutes. Uh... I thought it was an accident. I thought it was a pilot error. I thought that some foolish soul had gotten lost and and made a terrible mistake. That's a sobering moment to order your own combat aircraft to shoot down your own civilian aircraft. But it was an easy decision to make. But it was an easy decision to make. But it was an easy decision to make. That's a sobering moment to order your own combat aircraft to shoot down your own civilian aircraft. 
But it was an easy decision to make, given the, given the fact that we had learned that commercial aircraft were being used as a weapon. Um, it's an easy decision. It was. I didn't hesitate. Let me put it to you that way. I knew what had to be done. I didn't hesitate. Let me put it to you that way. I knew what had to be done. You and the president had earlier discussed rules of engagement for taking down a hijacked airplane, but you were the one who gave the direct order to shoot down a plane that you were told, as it turns out incorrectly, was headed for Washington. Right. That's correct. What's that moment like? Well, um, it was necessary. And uh, it was a, uh, frankly, I didn't uh, pause to think about it very much. Frankly, I didn't uh, pause to think about it very much. I didn't hesitate, let me put it to you that way. I knew what had to be done. There was that horrible time when we wondered if Flight 93 had indeed been shot down by an American pilot. On the orders of the president. Yes. It is quite possible that those people gave their lives for you. It's entirely possible. In fact, I think it's probable. I just want to say, at least on behalf of me and my family, I thank God all the time that it was George W. Bush in the White House on 9-11 and not Al Gore.